Okay, sorry for that hiccup there, but we are good to go now. Uh, welcome to the 13th Fleet After Action Report. I am your host. I am Chris. Uh, welcome to tonight's show. We are going to spend a lot of time talking X-Wing today. We are going to be focusing pretty much on the Chaotic Good Store Championship that happened this past weekend. Unfortunately, I couldn't be there, so I don't have a lot of input as far as what happened. Uh, but the good news is that I do have a couple of people that were there, and they're going to be happy to share their experiences with you. And then we also have Ethan with us, who was unfortunately unable to be at the event either. Uh, his issue was that he was feeling a bit under the weather, but I'm sure he has some input as far as what went on at the store championship. So... First off, uh, let's say welcome to Chris Emick, welcome to Ethan Emick, and welcome to Dexter Aulis. How is everybody tonight? Doing good, thank you. Better than always. <laughs> yeah, I, I see that you are on the road to recovery now, Ethan. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> so, um, first off, uh, any what what was the the most interesting aspect of the tournament on Saturday outside of the weather cuz it was it was a bad weather day and not everybody got to got to go because of bad travel conditions uh Dexter, I'll let you take a stab at this one yeah i think for me uh sore point and for a lot of players there was uh Don came out, came out on top out of the three of us that were tied at three wins and a loss. Uh, and Sean's dice luck was out of this world. Uh, Sean and I played in the final. I was 3-0, and and he was 2-1. and uh, The first turn, I flew pretty fast with Lareer. I'm flying the same list I've been, and he's been flying the same list he's been flying. Lareer takes a range three shot at Sicko through a rock. Uh, I think I roll one hit. And he rolls three blanks, which is pretty unlucky from his point of view. And, you know, one hit is about average on three dice, just below average. So he takes that, which is a bit sad. And then he rolls uh, just primary attack, hit crit. Lareer throws five dice, blanks on all five. Elusive reroll, blanks on that. Uh, so Lareer takes hit crit, and uh, that about sets up the rest of the game. You can just... And any dice luck that, that matches two dice getting hit crit, I think he rolled with two dice on Sicko four or five times that game, and I think four out of the five times he got hit crit. Nat, like natural, those those were the two things that he rolled. Uh, and then one time he re-rolled and got two hits out of it. Um, so that's that was the sore point for me. Uh, a big one, I think, in actuality was the you know the, the primary factions. Um, you know, a lot of people won't be playing Scum or CIS, but we saw. Almost, I think four or five of the seven people were flying Empire, which I expect we're going to see a large Empire presence in Worlds based on what people have been flying. Uh, and then two of the other, I think four flew Empire, and then two of us flew Republic, which I think will be the biggest two that we'll see. Of course, there will be Rebel, Rebel and Resistance as well. But Well, I want to take a quick moment to apologize to everybody for some audio issues that we may be receiving. Uh, my normal setup is gone a little bit haywire and I think my microphone is picking up the discord feed as you can tell I can't wear my headphones right now because there is an issue with the audio right now so uh, if you get a little bit of feedback I apologize if you get a little bit of echo I'm gonna see if I can find something else to to hook up to that while I step away from the computer for a moment I'll let go Chris go ahead and share his experiences Sure. Um, so we did a, uh, we were initially planning for a, uh, a four round uh, Swiss pairings uh, tournament. Uh, we figured we would get about 10 or 12 folks uh, from the local area on the up, but uh, Lexington, like uh, a lot of places across the country, had a weather event, you no, know, and it's not, and that knocked down some of our attendance up to seven and to be quite honest I was very thankful seven um, and we uh, 
at seven, typically for like a tournament, you would do rounds of Swiss, and then the only undefeated, the only undefeated person should be Dexter was. Your uh, pickup uh, is having some issues there, Chris. I apologize. Oh, okay. So, uh, so we had we had seven. Uh, normally, you play three rounds of Swiss with seven, and uh, you uh, typically award the 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 winner at the the only three and zero. Uh, but because we were all wanting to prep for Worlds, we wanted to uh, get four rounds in. Uh, we were all we were there. It was warm. You know, we weren't going to do anything else on a Saturday. Why would you do anything else when there's plastic ships to push? And uh, and so we went through a fourth round, and then due to that, uh, Dexter uh, losing the Sean's uh, uh, play, uh, then we had three players that were 3-0-1, uh, three wins, one losses, um, and due, due to strength of schedule, uh, Sean came out top. Um, so I've got oh, Sean's... Oh, I've got Sean's list called up here, and I just, uh, if you guys want to chime in on some of the things that make Sean's list work, I do know from, from my personal experience against play, with playing against him, one of the big factors is, is, is just experience with the list, because he has been playing this list or something very, very similar to it for a long time now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Ethan, when's the last time that you played against it? Uh, A couple weeks ago or so, but I mean, it really just comes down to he's been flying this for almost, I want to say five months now, consistently, where he's just always playing it. It's his one list. Occasionally, he'll go and play a fun list, but he's on this list. He knows it inside and out. And, I mean, out of all of us that are going up the worlds, I think he has the most practice with his list more than anyone else. Um, I'm probably the one that's right behind him because I've been flying mainly, primarily T-70s, and I'm just trying to fine-tune it to the point where it's a little bit better. I do know he misses triggers sometimes, but then again, there are a lot of triggers on that build. Republic and Dexter can back me up on this. If you build it correctly, you can instantly have a trigger at at almost any point in time. Literally, you shoot, I shoot. Um, you did damage, you didn't do damage. Uh, system phase, activation phase, start engagement, end phase, um, four shenanigans, and then... Um, Tarkin doing something re- wacky, and then all of a sudden you have done 15 triggers and spent 18 charges on a bunch of stuff. Um, and then you shoot. Two, well, no, for about <laughs> know, two I'm rerolls kidding. and a boost. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, without a doubt, that's that's how Flying Republic goes, and any Republic list I think that you can build right now that's competitive. I think that's one of the, and while while I do say that, you know, the Republic list is, is complicated and time-consuming, it is also one of the lists that has a lot of answers for a lot of different things just because of all those triggers. Well, I mean, you get so, so much viability out of all those stuff between the extra actions, the extra, or just the free target locks for those arcs is the main thing. Them being with us to sit there and focus and then they just get target locks down the line is insane. Which is part and, of the reason why you're playing the list that you're playing right now, correct? Um, not really. Um, I'm flying a bunch of T-70s because the easiest way to beat any list is to be man- more maneuverable than it and also throw enough dice at it that it will also work. And the T-70s are in that weird headspace where it's like, you kind of do that. And it's why the bomber, some ships, such as the ARCs, Decimators, and the bombers, um, where it's just they have enough health that they can tank it. And it just kind of comes down to which one do you prefer? You prefer playing or having 
things that can outflank or things that can take things head on. Yeah, I think the ability to... Sorry, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I think, like, like Ethan said, it comes down to if you prefer the health or, or the maneuverability in a lot of cases, like the big block. Um, that's the, the best way that I've found personally to deal with arcs with my list, is even though the bombers also kind of fly in a, in a block with a lot of health, um, the bombers combined with, I don't fly a decimator, but three separate ships have so much more ability to spread out and kind of wrap around. Um, like that's my approach a lot of the times for, for Sean's list and other arc lists is, you know, one big trigger in any Republic list right now is Padme. So if you can get, you know, two or three ships that are still throwing three dice with single or double mods, uh, outside of Padme's arc, all of a sudden, you know, that, that four points, while it may help with whatever's in arc, you're still going to be able to hit hard and you might even take Padme off the board before anybody else that's in arc gets to shoot. I do really like going after Padme first. I, I just... She's a softer target. Yes, you you have usually will be limited on the the dice adjustment, dice manipulation that you have against her. But if you throw enough dice at her, then she's going to go down. Yeah, the N ones, you know, get the. You can't hear you right now. The N ones do. Uh, any, get a free to a action whenever they do a speed three to five maneuver um but that does that only helps one result any sort of focus fire on a two shield three hole ship with only two agility dice it's gonna die if it's concentrated fire uh, upon um and so a lot of a lot of uh uh strategy against a lot the uh the the main Republic list right now uh, is to go after a four point Padme, which also reduces the, uh, the damage uh, reduction that she can provide uh, out of her front arc with her uh, pilot. Um, once that's off the board, uh, you have a little bit more consistency pouring in uh, a damage into one of the arcs you can, uh, you can pop, uh, with uh with multiple you know, with three and four die attacks um since now you can change all your eyeballs into hits if you want to yeah i i don't know i i really really hate flying against republic lists in general but but i've made no great secret of that i i think that the their cooperation their synergy with each other makes them tough to tackle because again you know you, yes i focus on padme but on the other hand while i'm focusing on padme everything else is spreading out on on my other ships and making my life difficult while i'm trying to take down this one four point ship but then again every ship on the republic list is about four points and so any one that you go after you're going to be running into the same issue One thing we'll say about, or I want to say about Sean's list, that he only is running three of four ships typically see um, in the Republic uh, meta right now. Um, and Jag and Oddball uh, in the Arcs, and then uh, Padme in the N1 Starfire. Um, instead of running a third arc, which is typically what has been dominating uh, most uh, higher level play, um, Sean has elected to run uh, Sicko in the uh, in the lat gunship, um, mainly because he likes having the uh, the double modded attacks without relying on a lot of the target lock shenanigan that he gets. So. So he will um, uh, make his approach where his arcs are leading the way. Uh, uh, Sicko is kind of slowly rolling up uh, from behind. And and while Sicko has uh, the uh, targets in arc, uh, then the the arcs and even Padme will get like a, a free to die reroll on things like a proton torpedo or range one uh, arc shot or whatever. And that... That damage, especially when you are relying on that and you are focusing with uh, with most of your other ships, that damage is hard to uh, shrug off if you go head-to-head -head with 
So I am not one that, that has done a lot of uh, research online. I haven't looked at what all is, is out there, what all is being played. I just kind of, my, my philosophy is that the first thing that you've got to do is be comfortable with your list and know how your list works before you can really concern yourself with what other lists do. Having said that, what is, you talked about getting ready for Worlds. What what do you think you're seeing coming up into Worlds? And we'll start with Ethan, because Ethan's been quiet for a little while. Well, we definitely know Falcons are going to be somewhere in Worlds. Either that be Lando, Han, or Rey. One of the, one of the three will almost absolutely likely show up. So playing against large base Falcons are going to show up. The Decimators are absolutely going to show up. They are, they always show up at Worlds. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. They're just, it's a lot of health. It's a good damage check. And if people don't have a good damage check, oh well. And basically what a damage check is, is basically because it's got so much health. If you're not able to punch through all that, da uh, all that health, uh, what happens if something actually has defense? To back it up with less health it just kind of fumbles um the bombers are absolutely going to be there we we have made it clear that the bombers are going to be there um look just because then, that's my preference doesn't mean that <laughs> no no it, they are objectively good there is no if ands or buts they are objectively good they will be at worlds um arcs uh you know Four point Anakin, Padme are all great choices. Um and anything after that is kinda just like B tier in a sense, for the most part. Uh it doesn't mean it's bad. It's just like some matchups are gonna be better for it and some matchups are gonna be worse. Um, I mean, for example, I built my T seventies around being fairly objective based, and so if I run up against a kill list and chance I don't know if I win that. Yeah, I think I, I think I, I want to refer to the way that a lot of people refer to things in Magic, and this this kind of helps new players understand. You know, tier one lists are are top of the line. They are your world championship lists. They are things that are always going to be dangerous, and you're going to hear a lot about online. And then you've got your tier two lists, which are very very competitive. And if they get the right matchups, they are dangerous. Very, very dangerous. Uh, then then you get your Tier 3 lists, which are, are more... They're somewhat competitive. They're, they're very specialized. They are what other people might refer to as janky lists because they, they do something really, really well. But on the other hand, they don't have the broad base and they they are really really more dependent upon matchups than anything else for their success and very specific situations for them to work yeah there doesn't seem to be very many hard counters right now to the existing meta um has shaken out across some of the higher level play i know this weekend um was the las vegas open um, I hadn't had a chance to to take a look at the finals of that, um, but uh, I think three out of the top four uh, were Republic lists with three R. Um, that just seems to be um, how things are going right now. Um, so the the one point I'll I'll make about tier two is I think X Wing is in a place now where the tier two lists are a little bit behind however play and player skill still matter you have if you have a better player running tier two versus somebody that is just running tier one doesn't quite understand the matchup the the obstacle and uh objective placement um the the attack math um the tier two list can come away with the victory um, there is, uh, I think there's plenty of evidence on that. Um, but for the uh, for the very, very, very top tier uh, of players who are looking to uh, make that uh, dent 
the world championships in March. Um, it seems like we're we're uh, it seems like the tier one lists are that's where they're all focused around now. Okay, and what what do you see as the tier one lists? We've got Ethan's take. I want to see what your take is. Uh, the three three arcs in Republic, uh, typically with Padme, and then splash four points onto that. Um, you've got running two or three bombers, typically three bombers in Empire, um, and you either throw in a Desi or you have some ace play um, that you can sprinkle around that, uh, trying to, making sure that you get up to about five ships so that you're not totally behind on objectives. Um, in Rebel, uh, it's a four or five ship list with Han and uh, Yavin Luke um, as, as the core, and then um, season to taste. Um, and that's it, unfortunately. Uh, everything else I, I would say is tier two, uh, and some factions can barely crack some of the, what they first order. Um, I've seen some I've seen some good results from first order lists that um, are explicit, either explicit counters where they are running the uh, uh, the first order bomber and uh, and an ordnance package uh, designed specifically to to kind of counteract the the arcs, um, or uh, ace play, um, you know, getting four or five aces on the board and just trying to outposition your opponent um, and not get double tapped by by Han in front. Um, but Scum is uh, struggling right now. There's uh, there's like a five chip list that I think over in England made a uh, top cut um, but didn't win. Um, CIS really doesn't have very good answers for anything right now. And, um, um, is that everybody? Who am I forgetting? Resistance? Question mark? Resistance? Resistance, fine. Uh, like, like Ethan said, you know, you run, you run a, uh, you either run a Falcon or you run five really good ships. Um, and they're closer to what I would consider on the cusp of, of tier one, tier two. Um, and and can probably win some good matchups if they get the right engagements against the bombers or on. So that's that's how the meta right now has shaken out, and uh, it remains to be seen how it will be further shaken uh, if we get the uh, uh, the Battle of Yavin cards in. Before. Well, from what I understand, if if I heard. The rumors correctly, uh, despite when Battle of Yavin comes, or not Battle of Yavin, Battle of Endor stuff comes out, it's not going to be able to be used for World Championships. That's just what I had heard. I don't know if that is correct, so you may want to fact check me. <laughs> yeah, my understanding was that they confirmed that they would release points for the Battle of Endor and it would be legal. Uh, because I think where it stems from is they said there will be no additional point changes, but then I think like an hour or two later they clarified there will be the points added for Battle of Endor. There will be no changes to any ships currently in in flight or pilots. Okay. Um, So I think Battle of Endor we may see is tournament legal for Worlds. Okay. In that case, do you think that's really going to affect what we see at Worlds? Uh, Depends on how good the B-Wings are. Depends on the pricing. It, that's that's uh, we we just gotta wait for the pricing. Uh, I can almost absolutely say we will see that Lando. Someone will fly that Lando. That Lando is too good to not fly, at least for fun. Well, and if we have the right point values on those defenders, uh, we probably uh, those I, defenders I, are iffy. <laughs> we'll we'll see. Those defenders are not as good as the like. As much as they are cool, longevity-wise, the whole reason you bring a defender is so it stays alive on the board and eats up all the shots and blocks everything, right? Uh, those defenders are built to burn. Slowly, hopefully, but they will burn. And so in a wrong scenario, which a defender can very easily get itself into, it's um, gone. Let's just put it that way. It's gone. 
See, I'm considering. Yeah, I'm considering actually running a a defender for tomorrow night since I still don't have my bombers back yet. <laughs> hey, uh, Vader defender is a heck of a lot of fun to fly. I'll say that, and Chris, just to kind of make a, a further point on this. You know, you you love oddball and the Republic arc so much oh, that yes, because yes, of indeed. their aggressive pricing. Um, and so we have the chance to see that again with these defenders and A wings and B wings and Falcon. If they are priced aggressively, they are going to really shake things up because they will be better pieces than what currently we can get value. Of. Especially for rebels. Rebels are they? They got some. They've got two or three good pieces. But they always want more, and if they get a couple B wings that are four points, um, that might shake up enough. And Tycho for sure. Um, God, that Tycho. If he's three points, I don't think he There's will no be. Way. There's no way he's three points. But who knows? Who knows? And also those uh those other A wings. Uh, depending on how, because they're low initiative A wings, they might be pay- priced at three. Those might be fun too. So I'm I'm just gonna throw out a a what if scenario here because things are really really bad for for at least three factions actually really bad for two and pretty bad for one and I am I just want to say is there any way to do a tier two list for any of those factions? I'll start with Dexter because Dexter's been a little bit quiet for a minute. <laughs> and and when I'm talking, yeah. what factions I'm talking about, of course, Scum, First Order, and um, wow, I'm drawing, CIS. yeah, CIS. Yeah, I think um, you, you know Chris. Chris kind of mentioned it when he went over each of the factions. There are lists that you can play, uh, especially in First Order, that can end right with with a well-skilled pilot versus a pilot of lower skill. Um, you know, you can really outfly your opponents with a good first order list, uh, which allows you to, you know, if they're not rolling dice against you because you're not an ARP, then it doesn't matter how many shenanigans and cool ships you have, you're not, you're not rolling red dice. Um, but I think, you know, I've, I've heard of a CIS list with a double fire spray and, like, dirge to fill in the last four points. Um, there, there's maybe been some merit around that. Uh, I haven't seen a whole lot of success with scum in anything, although I'm not as well. I don't uh, view like meta wing and list fortress and everything like that as much as, as Chris might. Um, so he may be more more well informed on it. Um, but I think if we see when we see people flying scum or, or CIS or first order, it'll be more of personal preference than that they they thought that was the best. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's not going to be somebody that was intending to make it to, to day two or day three of Worlds. It's going to be somebody that was having fun because they were close enough and got an invite or, or wanted to go with some friends. I feel like with, with CIS thematically, it really wants to have a swarm build, and yet they haven't made the ships good enough for a swarm build. Three. Three. The, uh... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, it's but fine. The The problem with uh, the vultures and all the droids and CIS is you need to have six or seven ships on the board to get the kind of value out of them that you were getting in 2.0, just jousting and, and, and flying basically what was chance encounter type situation. Um, because we've went to this scenario set up cheap chips in three of, of the four scenarios can get more scenario points than a, a typical five or four or three ship list. So unfairly, I th- in, in that context, I feel like the, the droids have been, been priced according to their, 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 potential to score those points in a um in a in the non-chance engagement scenario um it is what it is right 
unfortunately. Um, they eventually we may see a change in either scenarios or a change in pricing where um, those uh, those ships get um, the ability to kind of stack on some more value or are cheap enough now that you can you can run six of them and the scenarios won't be as as badly dominated by six or seven. Well, I'm going to throw this out here because I, I'm an Imperial player and I have no idea what CIS really has. But my, my feeling on that is that what CIS really needs is something that has a very good global effect, something that when this ship is out, every other ship gets this benefit. And I don't know that I have heard anything about there being that global effect that that really makes cis work so you are specifically referring to a tactical relay which is a specific cis only upgrade slot and basically it is an overall modification to most of your droids right for example you can take kraken and for 15 points, you can spend 15 points, so that way you can choose three of your droids within zero to three. They keep their calcs at the end phase. That's the best card. Wow. Yeah, they're... I, I just feel like they deserve something a little bit better, because I, I think that is, thematically speaking, that is the way that they should work. And mm -hmm. I... I guess they just haven't come up with anything that works like that. And, of course, you know, I haven't been playing that long, so nobody listens to my opinion. <laughs> so the, the main issue is they were built around these tactical relays, and there haven't been a lot of ships that can take them. For example, the Bulba Lab, and then you have the Sith Infiltrator, and then you have one of the hydra, uh, Hyena Bombers, and that's pretty much it. The Roombas. Oh, sorry, and the Roombas. Um, four of your, like, eight ships can carry it, which is a good amount. Um, but the problem is, is that the pilots on them are limited. They don't get a lot of points because they're scared about giving them too many points that they're good. Um, and the ones that do have a lot of points are so overcosted that you can't run what you want with them. For example, Captain Seer is the one go-to Boba Lab to fly with a bunch of vultures. Well, if all the vultures are priced the same, and you have a bunch of named ones, and the named ones want to sit on a rock, and your whole ability is basically to slam a bunch of vultures into people and then get basically a different version of crack shot. Well, that doesn't really work when you have to spread out wide and contest all these different objectives for assaults or hit the light switch and suddenly one of them gets murdered and you're not over there to and you've just given them two points because the vultures go pop. Yeah. Instantly. Now, from a thematic standpoint, looking at scum, I I feel like they're doomed to failure anyway just because they they probably should not be designed to work well together. <laughs> So there's a good amount of scum stuff that works really well. Boba is always just a godsend in scum. Fenrau is also a great pick. People who can fly a really good Fenrau are really scary because they can keep them in range one or out of arcs and not shot. Um, but besides those like two set pieces, you got a couple of fangs and then a few other ships that are okay. It's just like fire sprays and fangs are your main. Yeah. Heavy hitters. The most successful scum list right now on um, Meta Wing uh, is uh, Ben Rao, Fang Fighter, um, a Dirge in the Rogue class, uh, Cad Bane in the Rogue class, and then two of the Y Wing. And the reason why you're running two of the Y Wings is because you can put. Um, you can put ion cannon turret and or uh, or a um, warhead or a, a missile or a torpedo on one, and they're both three point. That's it, it is what it is for for scum 
just have to take those five ships and just completely outfly. To be fair, it's a very high initiative list because Fenrau, Cat is four, Dirge is five. One of the Lima Kai is the other, the one three point that I absolutely know is a five point, and the other one's yeah. probably a four. So there's uh, Arlie's Arlie's had Drassian, mm -hmm. and that's the one where if you perform uh, a, a front arc attack, if you're damaged, you can change an eyeball into a crit, and then when you defend, if you're damaged, have to change one of your focus bolts to a blank result if you are damaged. Which is, you're fly wing, you don't care. Yeah, I mean, you're going to die. It's three points that you're definitely going to give your opponent. So everybody that, uh, I mean, I shouldn't say everybody. There are a lot of people that when they come into a big event, they are looking to counter whatever is being played at that moment. And while there, there's a bit of variety on, on what we're seeing right now, so I, I feel like it's kind of hard to do that. But if you were being asked to counteract what the meta is right now, what approach would you take, Dexter? Yeah, I think it's... Uh, it, it sounds silly to say, but I think it's kind of hard. Um, I don't know who it was. It might have been you, actually, Ethan, that explained it to me this way one time. But as I was putting together the list that I was deciding I wanted to build and practice with for Worlds, um, whatever, like a month ago, a couple of weeks ago, um, I was thinking about like which list I wanted to counter, and as I was speaking with with a couple of the X-wing guys, um, it was kind of like it goes in a big, almost a big circle of like which lists be which. So kind of like rock, part paper, of the reason, scissors. Yeah, and I, it's not one to one or anything like that. Of, of course, um, some lists are just kind of better than others, and you can you can certainly multitask and in preparing, um, you know, offset some of the differences. Uh, but in my understanding was like you see a little bit less of Han in the in the Falcon because the arcs are kind of a direct counter to that. If you can line them up and set the rocks up correctly, um, you can really blow Han up. That's quite a few points that you've got, and then the rest of the board, you know, Luke is a set piece, and then the other other everything else just kind of fall into place. Um, and Luke will fall apart too if you get three arcs and a Padme and, and an Anakin or something else pointed at him. Um, and then you know the bombers, kind of similarly, also were. I think in part a response to Han just being able to push so much damage into one place consistently um, and then you know any other lists maybe the T70s in that fourth slot we said is, is the next the next list that's maybe not at the top of the meta but, but pretty close um, with the extra maneuverability can kind of fight both I, I don't know if this is what we're seeing consistently across the meta playing Ethan uh, he's been playing much much longer than me and I would say he's definitely a better pilot than I am um, thankfully that's good for practice that's what I need but uh, flying those X-Wings he's pretty nifty about staying in a place that's hard to get even with six ships wrapped up in one of the ships you know blast two or three of them off the board to give me what I need in addition to objective points um, and so those you know a well flown ace list can certainly combat the arc list I think or the bomber list because you just don't have the same maneuverability that you do when you have to fly either in a block or at least close with the arcs you need to be kind of close with each other especially oddball um, and so I, I kind of think of it like that, like, what do you want to do? Do you want to be able to counter the Han list? Do you want to be able to counter the, the, the arc list? If you are more of an ace, you're not going to dodge Han Solo's arc and, and you're going to get, you know, shot or maybe double tap if you have two ships nearby, if you're flying one of those lists. So I kind of view it as, you know, what do you want to do? Uh, which of those lists do you specifically want to counter? And then you figure out ways to offset your weaknesses against the other ones. Ethan? Yeah, I mean... It's when it comes to you know figuring out how to counter the meta, it really comes down to like how it's flown to me because you see the arcs, you see the bombers, they're usually flown in a very similar fashion. Some people will break them up, some people don't. Um, it really just depends on the person who's flying it. But there's usually a generalized way of flying it. And both Dexter and my dad can agree with this. Usually you want them together. They get the most value next to each other. So, 
you make it as hard as possible for them to focus on one target. You ram up in their face and make it impossible for them to get all the stuff they want. Uh, the game against my dad pretty recently, uh, the only reason I lost is because I barrel rolled. And I got accidentally just stuck in a spot where it got shot multiple times and it made her explode. And then my other x wings got some pot shots at them and lost their shields and that was pretty much the game. Dexter knows that I have to bum rush his bombers in order to make sure that he's not getting all his barrage rockets off. Because if I let one round have three barrage rockets go off, I've lost the game. There is no if ands, or buts. My X-Wings have two defense dice. If you force me to re-roll, I'm not going to get that lucky. Sometimes yeah. I will, but I, it's not a good it's not a good chance. So it's, you really have to outfly the meta list, even if you're flying a meta list, because you might be flying bomber v bomber. Well, they also want to get their barrage rockets off. So maybe you fly in a funky formation, so that way you purposely murder something or get one of the bombers just out of arc of your formation so it's a 2v3 and then they're screwed and so on there's yeah you have to look at the opponent's list and find i always think of it as the uh the four point week you want to get a kill you want it to be more than three points if you can you want to be more than four points if you can but you want to get four points on a kill in the non-chance engagement scenario without completely sacrificing scenario control. So you got to look at your opponent's list. You've got to figure out which ship is going or ships is going to give you that that push. Um, with some of the rebel lists, you know, there's a you know you can get Sabine pretty easily for two points. And then pick off, you know, the three-point filler they put in. There's five. Um, with uh, with the arcs, with Padme, Padme's your four points. You with can the Empire. It's it's going to be Captain Jonas. You know, going to be Jonas. The bombers. Right. And then and then getting that engagement, getting that four points for your opponent can get what they want from your list. And then at that point, it's it's you know outfly them. You know, you got your four points, know what your scenario goals are, and know what your win conditions are, and you go get them. So again, I'm going to take us on a really, really unusual tangent here because I, I love theory crafting, and I think it's important in any kind of strategy game, be it Magic, Hero Clicks, X-Wing, Armada. I have seen in, in every game that I have played what would be considered a control build, something that is designed to prevent your opponent from doing the things that they want to do during their turn. I have yet to encounter that in X-Wing, and I am curious as to whether or not that exists and how you might go about it. Chris, have you forgotten about your favorite upgrade on the resistance side? Uh, well... <laughs> I mean that 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 has an aspect to it, but it, it is not complete. I mean it, it it's a very narrow focus on that. Whereas when I refer to a control build, it's it's going to stop quite a few different things from going on. I think that's more first order's idea. And that's that's what I was thinking just off the top of my head, but. Uh, again, I, I've been playing Empire since I started the game, so I, I don't know as much about what they have available. So I'm just shooting it out there to see see what people think there. I think First Order is your go-to, I'm going to jam the crap out of you, and then I'm also going to do some other shenanigans, and you have to deal with it and make a really hard decision of... Do I take defense or do I try to murder you before you murder me? Um, Scum is also in... If Scum was a little bit better, they're in the kind of the same position and that's how they've always been built around is I'm going to screw you over and you just have to deal with it because you just happen to be put in the exact spot I want. 
Uh, either that's Pavlov being able to just like, oh, here's some free ions, or it's like Cad Bane's ability where he tosses you a red token and then all of a sudden you're ionized or something. And it's just all this other different shenanigans that just you basically force upon your enemy. Scum is very controlled because it's like, for example, you just ram Boba Fett in there and it's like, well, try it. Try getting damage through on Boba. You're not going to do it unless you get really lucky. My rerolls suck. Um, but there's like a bunch of at least older builds of scum that I remember of being absolutely notoriously terrible to play with. Um, there are a bunch of ships that are now extended because of that. Uh, I'm looking at the freaking tugboats. God dang quad jumpers. And tractor <laughs> shenanigans. Do not miss those things. I mean, it's one of those things where I, I, I recognize that a lot of people hate control builds because they typically are not much fun to play against. Because, again, people like to play the game that they set down and, and plotted out their build to do, but on the other hand, they can be really, really effective if you can find a way to build it. Uh, so do you think there's an approach, Chris? I think the closest that I've seen thus far is what what Dawn has been running lately, which is a decimator with, uh, with Death Troopers and Vader on. Um, uh, double Desis and Morna Key with Seventh Sister. Yes. The combination of both of them is insane. Because the Death Troopers prevent you from getting stress. You take the stress outside of the range near Morna. Morna puts you in a tractor and throws you closer to Darth Vader. Or turns it into a jam, gets rid of your focus, and then Vader does a damage to you. And there's, there's a lot of value in, especially with, like, the three arc build in Republic, there's a lot of value of having those two Desis just jam up the middle, and now your arcs either are going to bump, take the stress, and then never get rid of it because they're just, that Desi's just going to be controlling the area, or both of them are. Or you're not taking the red focus, and then you're losing a lot, a lot of the token passing shenanigans that is kind of necessary to, to get to kind of attack damage need on the non desi Absolutely. I think the first thing that came to my, my mind when you asked about it, well, the first two was, of course, you get a lot of the jamming and, and so on with First Order. Um, but with what I actually play against you know, on a weekly basis and see is Dawn with his double Desis. Um, I think some of it, too, as Ethan mentioned, like part of it's not just the lists, but who's flying it and their, their fly style. Um, and I think Don definitely tries with that list. Like his intention is to make it hard for you to um, do you do what you want to do. You have to yeah, think you have to think really hard, hard yeah. really hard to fly against Don. And it's a uh, it makes it a very fun game. The way I have to really decide. Okay, I'm gonna do this action first, or otherwise I'm screwing myself later because I'm going to now be in range, or do I just sit here? and take the range 3 shot that is less convenient or the range 2 shot instead of getting in the range 1 but now I'm no longer stressed and all all these options you are now forcing me to shoot you with worse odds because you happen to have this really good ability so what what are your expectations for worlds uh, I, I leading into that I mean we're we're close to the end of the tournament season is that correct we got eight days left. That's what I thought, because I know uh, the final Armada event is actually coming up, and I'll, I'll tease that here at the, the very end. But what, what are you expecting out of your trip to Worlds? Good old time of a bunch <laughs> of nerds around. <laughs> uh, okay. No, oh, we're so... going to have a blast. We're going to have a blast, right? Like, the X-Wing community is has been one of the the best communities that I've ever seen balance the desire to have a top-notch competitive game against each other, but without being uh, totally against each other, without being factional, without being um, bitter about wins or losses. And, and I have a feeling that 
this world is just going to let us celebrate that um, for the whole for the whole weekend, and it's going to be nice seeing some dudes that or some people that I don't get to see very often. I only hardly ever see online. It's going to be nice playing them. It's going to be nice to meet new people uh, that has shared this passion with me and kind of have that same expectation of we want a really good game, but we're but we're going to have we're going to leave this competition as as uh, as as respected competitors and not um, mad at each. No bad blood. <laughs> the only good thing about X Wing is no bad blood. It's all the dice's fault. Everyone blame the dice. <laughs> Absolutely. The dice win and lose games. Every game. <laughs> well, I want to thank you guys for being on tonight. I know we kind of rambled away from, from the topic of of the tournament, but I, I feel like we, we covered a lot of really important stuff. So, uh, again, thank you guys for being on the show and probably going to be a couple weeks before we have you back on. Sounds good. Hey, I've got a quick question, if you don't mind, Chris, for sure. Dexter. Dexter, you you started playing early last year, and now you are going to Worlds. What is it that you expect, not knowing anything about, you know, other than what we have told you about, you know, this level of competition, and, and what are your expectations for, for uh, Adept? Yeah, from a, from a competitive standpoint... I would be really happy if I made it to day two. I'm not expecting to, um, but I think like in terms of competing, I already have my world invite, so I'm there day one. I'll, I'll have the day one worlds. I think I'd be happy with day two, and I, I don't even expect to make it to day two to be honest. Um, but really, I'm going to have to hang out with the guys, like both you and Ethan said. Um, I'm going to be there for what four days. Realistically, I'm expecting that I'll get to play in a competitive scene for one of them. Um, I'm going to be hanging out with you guys. There's a couple people I've played online through XBT that I'm excited to meet um, that I know have already said they have their worlds or they're going to the last chance qualifier and I'll be there and I'll get to meet them. Um, so I think, like you said, like even though it's the biggest competitive scene for X-Wing and it, everybody's there and enjoying the competition, you know, it's it's not just the competition. It's the camaraderie of like, hey, let's hang out. There's a good pizza place I know Don is ecstatic to go to again and, and bring us to. Um, and so I think that's what I'm looking forward to the most is I'm not expecting to, I'm not going to be the, the world champion of X-Wing. That's, that's not going to happen, but I think I'll have a really good time. You can always believe, you can always believe <laughs> there's a chance, a very slim chance, but there's always a chance. You could always have Sean dice left. Yeah. Three I was days, say, right? Steal Sean's yeah. dice. <laughs> no, 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 we don't want Sean's dice, we want Sean to be bitter about and look over our shoulder like, come on, Ace, you gotta roll at least three hits and then rolls three blanks, and you're like, alright, cool, I lose. Oh, All we right. apply Sean to our opponents, that's what you're saying, Got Yes, it. yes, yes, yeah, 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 apply Sean logic to their dice. Well, I Love will you, say... Sean. I will say good night, everybody. You have a good one, and we will be on for Tuesday Night X-Wing tomorrow. Not sure who we're going to have on the stream, but we'll have something entertaining. So I want to thank everybody again for tuning into the show. I, I'm glad that you, you clicked on that, and I hope you will click on like and subscribe, uh, whether you're watching this right now on Twitch or if you're catching the, the loadout on YouTube later on. Well, we, we definitely like having you here. We're always trying to grow the channel, and we are always welcome to comments. I want to hear what you think of the show. What are some of the things that we can do better? What are some of the things that, that we do well? And what do you want to hear about? We want to make sure that we give you the show that you're wanting to, to know about. Now, as far as for my Armada friends, uh, next week we are going to have a great show for you because we will be talking about the Chaotic Good Armada Store Championship, which is going to be happening this coming Sunday. And that will be streamed. I, I will have all the cameras set up. We'll have our last practice session on Thursday, so I should have some video from that, although it's going to be pushing it because I get off work late, which means that I'm going to be kind of coming in there a little bit late and rushing the setup. But I'm going to do everything that I can to get that set up quick enough so that we can get you some, some video at 6.30 on Thursday. 
Same thing is going to be said of Tuesday Night X-Wing. I'm going to be a little bit rushed to get everything set up, but I will do my best to get it started at 6.30. If I don't get it right at 6.30, stick around. We're, we're going to have Tuesday Night X-Wing for you tomorrow. So thank you again for, for watching, and I hope you have a fantastic week. Take care, guys. Thank you.